What prompted you to write this particular book at this particular time? So great question. Um, you know, as a neuropsychologist, I, I uh, think a lot about the brain and how the brain is related to behavior. But as a, a colleague whimsically said, you know, neuropsychologists tend to be uh, deficit hunters. We kind of look for, for the cognitive problems, but we don't always think about the solutions and how we can, you know, improve brain health. So this was an attempt to, you know, really look at the science of how to make our brains work better and really focus on that side of the equation and not just the, the problems that people can experience. Also, a few years ago, I had uh, done a, a deep dive into the science, and I had uh, written and edited a volume for other colleagues that was a little bit more technical in nature. And I wanted to essentially translate what I had learned at that point in time to a general audience. Um, and so that, that was really my goal here. Um, and I guess I would also say that, you know, most people want to understand how they can help their brains work better and might be a little confused about the information that they see in popular media, on TV. There's a lot of information about this topic. Not all of it is based in the science. A lot right. of it, in fact, is not. So I really always felt back on, you know, what do the studies say and how can I, you know, perhaps come up with some applications um, for the, the average person who wants to learn more. Yeah, and one of the things that I really like about your book is you start off talking about how much hype there is out there being directed at the public and that there are a lot of myths and misunderstandings and uh, we'll probably spend a good deal of our time going through those and, and you can use those as a springboard for uh, for making some of the other points that uh, that you have to make about how we foster brain health. One of the first things that comes to mind is I see ads on TV. I think it's, I'm not scared to mention the product, Prevagen, <laughs> I think is the one. And um, that, that's going to improve our memory, they say. And uh, I think it's based on uh, some sea creature, right? Um, Cells. jellyfish or something yeah, yeah there's some sea creature the there's another one that uh it talks about blue green algae and what that can do for you and so we have this sort of notion that if we take i mean <laughs> even even if if a blue green algae has a better memory than i do there's no reason <laughs> to believe that me swallowing some of it is necessarily going to get to the right places and do the stuff that i would hope for Right, right. Yeah, there's this, uh, you know, multi-billion dollar industry um, based on products that aren't necessarily reviewed by the FDA, um, that have, you know, kind of dubious claims and, and, and support. So I, I actually address this topic in my book that um, we know that there really are a lot of these kinds of products out there that, that just don't have much science, but have a lot of marketing, um, right. you know, maybe a, a few people that are uh, providing testimonials about the product. But when we look at what matters the most to the brain, it's activities and decisions we make that are available to everyone, um, sorts of things that are free or inexpensive. These are the things that matter the most. 